Welcome to the Only Fools Love Horses YouTube channel. Now, you're probably wondering why I've decided to dig out my GCSE French. Well, it is the ARC weekend. Plenty of Group 1 races over here in the UK and over at Paris Longchamp to talk about. It's a fantastic couple of days. I'm joined, as ever, with Harry. Harry, we've gone to this screen right here. I've gone to the proper screen now. Harry, how are you? Uh, head of ARC weekend. I'm looking forward to some fantastic races and the ARC itself. You look forward to it yourself. Yeah, not bad. Not bad, Ash. Um, it's looking like it's going to be pre a pretty different arc weekend. Usually we see it in a bog. I haven't seen that much rain around. I've checked the forecast. I'm checking every day. There doesn't seem to be that much rain lurking around this side of the water or over in France. So it might just be worth taking note of that. If you do have a bet, we'll get we'll get diving into plenty of the races unfolding. Lee, you might be wondering where Lee is. Lee will be back on the channel uh, very soon. He's just taking a, a, a bit of time off, but he will be back in. Um, so don't stress for those that are worrying where um, the gorgeous Geordie is. He, he told me off was <laughs> calling the crazy Geordie last week, but he will be back. Um, and yeah, I really can't wait to get uh, stuck into the action this week, Ash. No, we're looking forward to having Lee back on. He's the one who actually provides the winners of, of the three of us. So uh, <laughs> it'll be nice to, to have him back on and to actually have some winners providing. No, we had a decent run on the weekend, Harry. Uh, we backed value losers, I think. Navassar Island was one of mine. But um, we're, we're, in, we're in fair enough form and we're looking forward to the ARC weekend. Um, just going back on last weekend, I have one horse. So the ladies and gentlemen sat uh, listening in, uh, the one horse to go into the trackers. Um, we do this usually. We're going to keep this quite short but I'm going to give one horse uh, and it's Al Bashir he's my eye catcher from the last weekend I thought he ran a great race in the Air Gold Cup he was absolutely he wasn't seen for, for pretty much all of it five furlongs he wasn't seen in the final furlong he came storming home to finish fourth in the Air Gold Cup next time he's out in a six furlong handicap uh, I don't think the market will miss him, um, but I think he's going to be one to back uh, for next weekend or whenever he's out next. I think he's my eye catcher of last weekend. Harry, should we get stuck into the to the action on the weekend? GSI, my friend, because uh, I, d I don't want to think about Mr. Sketch. The five to one nap of the weekend, he comes there swinging and he just he just couldn't get it done. Sicking him really. It's these two year old races, Harry. They're 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 bad for our health, really. They, and we're they kicking off with one. Well, well, yeah, we are. We are. Yes, yeah, absolute seamless from you. Uh, the, uh, the Group 1 Chiefly Park Stakes. We're starting in Newmarket on Saturday. Six furlongs for Chiefly Park. Relief Rally topping the market at 7-4. to four. Jasna's Secret, the French Raider coming in 5-1. to one. Border Fortuna at 6. Is Soprano, the same price. Cherry Blossom, who was just seen last weekend, so she might not turn up at 12. Persian Dreamer at 12-1 to one as well. Harry, I'll go to you first of all. The Chiefly Park interesting to your old race but where do you want to side with i think we're both in the same boat here do you know what i've been trying to take on relief rally all season the one time i got her right she got beat by a nose she should have won um but she should be coming in here unbeaten she's arguably in my opinion one of the classiest two-year-olds we've seen especially the classiest filly that we've seen as a two-year-old um this season in my opinion at york she stepped up to six for the first time she just took in a stride I mean, the, the further she went, the better she was going. She came with a blistering turn of foot down the outside and just put some pretty decent horses to bed um, with relative ease. Uh, Jasmine Secret's in there. Um, Christoph Sumion's obviously coming over for the ride. That horse has been mopping up two um, six furlong races over in France. Porta Fortuna, listen, she's very classy. Dropping back down to six, um, that would certainly suit her well. Uh, I wouldn't be writing her off at all, especially with the Sheen Murphy back on. Obviously, he was second on her in the Phoenix Stakes. Soprano's one that, do you know what? I think she's just failed to build on the promise that she's shown, um, which is a little bit disappointing. Ryan Moore's obviously a great booking, um, but I think even his wonderful hands wouldn't be able to get her home in front. I just can't have her for the life of me. But yeah, could we go back to um, Relief Rally? And I just think she is just so classy. Um, actually, William Haggis has not not won this race since 2012, and he won it with Rosdu Queen. Um, so that is it's a little bit of a stato for you that one. So it could be 11, 11 time lucky um, since <laughs> since he's last won this race. And um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I'm, I'm guessing she, she might be over to the Breeders' Cup um, after this. I'm not too sure. I've not really read up uh, what her future future targets are. However, she's just full of class, full of speed. She should just be too good for these. 
Yeah, she's an interesting horse. I think uh, William Haggis has sort of spoke about the fact that um, he wants to make use of her while she's a two-year-old because he's he's not too sure how much she's going to progress on as a three-year-old. She could be quite good as a three-year-old, but she could be quite a now horse, and that's why they've ran her plenty of times this season, and they're running her again. Um, I'm with Relief Rally as well. I think the form stacks up from her win last time out at York. Um, Cherry Blossom was sent off evens for the Goss Million on the weekend, finished second to what looks like a rocket in, in one look. Um, Dorothy Lawrence was well-backed um, last time out when running and finishing a dis disappointing effort in the first for Clyde, but Dorothy Lawrence was in behind that day at York. Uh, Beautiful Diamond was in behind that day as well. That beat uh, pu pu Puro Sangre uh, of Andrew Boldings uh, in the uh, listed Rosemary Stakes when, when well-backed again. I think went off odds on or somewhere around five to six. So that form has worked out well. And Flora Bermuda was actually last home in that York race that Relief Rally won. Um, and that one's uh, gone and finished second to Big Ev since. Uh, and, and was a nice, good, was uh, glorious, good winner before that. So I think the form is starting to work out really quite nicely. Um, and look, you know, I keep going back to it. Um, it's Jack Nichol was the first to put out on Twitter that ha um, William Haggis uh, likes to send out his best two-year-old of the season uh, as his first two-year-old of the season if they're ready. And Relief Rally was this. Um, you know, she's a fan she's a fantastic filly, I think. Uh, and for me and for you as well, uh, Relief Rally ticks all the boxes. I think. Uh, I think it should be interesting. It'll be interesting to see what the ground is at Newmarket. I think it's going to be fairly decent, um, but she looks she's shown that she can handle pretty much anything. So uh, we're both in the relief rally camp, Harry. Uh, we'll move on to the the final UK race we're going to be covering and the final UK two-year-old race. Um, it's directly after uh, the Group 1 Middle Park Stakes. River Tiber and Van Dijk are sharing the top of the market, 9-4, to four, about the pair of them. Uh, just saw in there, 8-1, to one, Task Force, the same price, Lake Forest 12s, Elite Status 16 to 1, Starla 16s, Array 25s. Let's be frank about it, 25s. Harry, I think it's an absolutely fantastic race. I really do think this has got lots and lots of quality in here. You can make a case about plenty, uh, but what horse are you making the case for in this? We were talking about the um, how the top two in the market were basically dominating the, mar uh, dominating the race, and I think it is between the top two in the market, River Tiber and Van Dijk now. Aidan O'Brien is the leading trainer in this race. He's won it seven times. Obviously, he won it last season with Blackbeard. Now, if you quite a, quite an interesting fact is Blackbeard and River Tiber, and also Van Dijk links into this as well. They 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 kind of all follow the same path. Um, Aidan O'Brien's he's a he's a he's a master at what he does, but he's also he, he's also a genius at sending these horses on the same routines and the same paths. It's just a winning formula. Why change something that isn't broken, as they always say, as the famous old saying goes. And actually, Deauville, the, the group one last time, it's actually a very good standing point, the uh, pre-morning. Obviously, Van Dijk came out in top. Now, I believe if Van Dijk was trained by Edna O'Brien, this horse would be on top. Quite simply, he'd be going for an eighth win in the race. Van Dijk's unbeaten this season. Looks a monster. It's a proven race that... Bodes well into going into this um, this particular Middle Park Stakes, and I just think Van Dijk is just cla he's just classy in the River Tiber. He had no excuses, and I I know it looked a pretty tricky ride for Ryan Moore yesterday. He kind of fell out the stalls, didn't he? And um, he was riding him along quite, and he did stay on. He was only beating two lengths in a bit, but he I was. Mean, he, I think he did have a little setback after Royal Ascot, so he wasn't hundred percent for for last time out. So it was, yeah, that's why people are saying it's a fairly promising run from River Tiber to finish third on, you know, first third on first run back uh, in a group one. It was. And listen, no doubt whatsoever that this is, a, this is a very smart horse, but actually interestingly enough, River Tiber actually was, if I'm right, if I'm right in saying Blackbeard missed the race at the Curra and went straight to Deauville. And obviously River Tiber had a little, little knock and nearly missed the race at Deauville. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that Aiden wanted to get this, get this <laughs> race in he needed to get this into um obviously into preparation for the middle park states yeah. but van Dijk for me ash is a um i believe it'd be simon in a christmas first middle park stakes um but he just looks the best horse that they're, they're training at the minute he's clear on ratings um he should take all the beating in this nine to four i, I think it's a gift of a price that one ash He's gone to the he's gone to the phrase book and he's found gift for the price <laughs> very early in the show. No, look, I I, I agree with with Van Dijk here, uh, and it's it's quite scary that we're agreeing in the first few races. Yeah, this is a good. Um, it's not, and, and and look, you know, like I I just think that form last time out is quite good. 
You know, like people were people were binging up the se- the, the the seconds that the Chris Christopher Head trained Ramatuel. Uh, dusting up on my French there again. Sam Hart, if you're watching, please do send me that French phrase book. Uh, but no, like people were <laughs> people were build, like building quite a lot up about the case for her and saying that she's a really really solid horse and she's a really really good one. She's gonna well, she went off Evans' favourite and she was gonna win the race. And and Van Dijk, you, you go back and watch that morning. You know he's travelled beautifully into the race. He's picked up off the heels of the second and he's gone away and he's just started to get up at the line. I thought he did really, really well that day. And look, he was on very soft ground, but the way his action goes about things, he travels beautifully into his races. Go back to his Goodwood win, and he's not a big sort of galloping type that eats up the ground. He sort of just glides into it. He's got a lovely action. Um, and it brings me on to my point of his last three wins, or his only three wins of his career, and his only three races of his career uh, have been on good to soft or slow. It was good to soft at Nottingham and soft at Goodwood when he won the Group 2, um, the, the Richmond Stakes. And then it was soft, uh, very soft when he won the Group 1, uh, Morney at uh, Deauville. Um, so can he handle decent ground, which is probably going to be like at Newmarket? Uh, a small look for his pedigree says he can. Uh, Havana Gray, exceed and excel, exceed and excel as a damn sire. You know, you, you can potentially make a case of why he should be able to handle most rounds. Fairly ground versatile uh, pedigree on him. And even some of the close relatives, the the the... the the siblings and even the the dam siblings are, are horses that have been winning on good to firm ground. So um, I'd have a hope in my heart that Van Dijk can handle fairly decent ground uh, because if he can, I, I think he's got a fantastic chance here. Um, he's a really really nice type, and yeah, nine to four. I'm happy to say that price. I, I have fair amount of respect for 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 um, Task Force and uh, Lake Forest. I thought Lake Forest was very good last time out, especially Task Force though. I'd, I'd probably that's my each way angle into the race. Uh, I thought he was very good when winning the the listed race at Ripon, uh, the two-year-old trophy. Um, and I thought he was really nice. I think he's the one that can can progress the most out of Task Force and uh, and Lake Forest. Uh, I say he's the one who's probably the more progressive. Uh, he's got a fantastic pedigree, you know, by Frankel. So uh, I say he's the each way angle into the race. But I'm with you, Harry. We're together again. Van Dijk in this race. I cannot absolutely believe it. Um, <laughs> we'll take a flying route over then to, to France. Um, we'll start off Arc, Arc Weekend. Um, we've, got, we've got five Group 1 races uh, to talk about. Or maybe it might even be six Group 1 races to talk about um, over at Longchamp. Now, it's very key to talk about the ground before we get into the first race. Currently described as soft ground at Paris Longchamp, but it looks like it'll be quite a, a sunny experience throughout the week. Um, so it could be going off good ground, quite uncertain on what it's going to be like. Obviously, the moisture does hold in the does hold in the turf at Longchamp very well. Um, so we'll have to see what it turns up like. So we're taking a little stab in the dark, but I think we're happy to here. And we'll start with uh, the pre-Royal U. Um, it is Mellow Mellow topping the market four to one. Emily Dickinson thirteen to two. Shamida sevens. Ossery eights. Same price about Sea Silk Road. Harry, floor is yours for the first race at Longchamp. Yep, Sea Silk Road is the one for me. The last on your list, but the first on mine. Now, it's her first step up to one mile six, which is a little bit of a, a, a worry. I mean, the, the dam obviously didn't, uh, never attempted to try. And it's unknown territory, but she's she's so game, this horse. And I love that about a filly that's stepping up. And you, you've just got to think that if... Tom Harkon will not be letting these. Uh, he, he won't be letting these get a freebie on the front end either. And he'll be throwing everything at this horse. And she'll be, she'll keep going. She's as game as anything. I've seen the money. I think what is she eight to one? Um, eight to one, yeah. Eight, eight to, one. to one, yeah. And she, I, I can only see that price coming in. Really, um, I don't know much about the French horse um, Mellow Mellow. That horse is what price is the fr- obviously got the form behind Four one heart, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Fours. Do you know what? It's, it's a wide open race. The likes of Emily Dickinson, that horse is likely to go for the um, Foray or the Cadran or one of them. Um, <laughs> Mimic Q has no chance. Everyone knows, listening to this, <laughs> this listening to, everyone knows what I think about this horse. <laughs> and Sumo Sam would interest me. Um, but you've got, I'm guessing Russell Ryan would take the ride. There's no way Tom Marcon will get off Cecil Silk Road. He won't be allowed to for no. one. Yeah. And she'd obviously be stepping up in trip as well. I'd have it between those two, Sumo Sam and C Silk Road. The only thing with Sumo Sam is she's had a, she's had a pretty tough race and what has she really beat? Uh, whereas C Silk Road is obviously two lengths behind Warm Heart. Obviously Mellow Mellow was was second. 
I think that's the best form in the race. And mm. I think so, so, Cecil Crowe is certainly the overpriced one. So she can go as my first one. And for once, we don't agree. No, we don't. And it's, that is actually usually the case. So we don't agree. And then thank God for that, really. But um, no, I, th- th- there's the interesting form angle for a lot of these horses is um, where they stack up against Warm Heart, who I, I, I'd say is, is, is one of the best three year old fillies in the division. Um, you know, Tahira obviously in there as well, but that's sort of in more of the miler area, whereas Warm Heart sort of, you know, 12 furlongs and above really um and it, it, it does sort of stack up as where they fit into the picture because Melo Melo was second to um, warm heart last time out Tito road was was third to warm heart as well so it's, it's it's stacking up around there but i'm going with a different horse who has warm heart form from going way back now going back to 7th of may uh, when they're running in a maiden at leopardstown uh, i'm going with shamida uh, for Dermot Weld, very very hardy filly here for Dermot Weld was uh, third to Warm Heart by a, a length and a half um, at Leopard's Town, as I said. Uh, and what's key here is Warm Heart sort of went from the front, went clear by about three lengths, and then on that sort of really quite sticky going at Leopard's Town, started to get going uh, under Lee Roche, and, and, and then kept staying on, only beat a length and a half. I think that was a really really nice run there from Shamida back at the start of the season. Then was one go on to win three races uh, in a row since. Um, notably beating Dawn Rising last time out uh, in the uh, Saint Le- Irish St. Ledger trial. Uh, Dawn Rising's gone to finish second in the Irish Cesarowicz, uh, sorry, third in the Irish Cesarowicz, as well as being third in the Irish St. Ledger itself. So I say that form works out fairly decently. And even on debut was third to Sounds of Heaven, who's gone to win a listed race since and finished third to uh, Tahira in the Coronation Stakes at uh, Royal Ascot. So all the forms seem to be stacking up quite nicely. Um, she's, she's a very hardy horse who would, who would stay the distance. She's won twice already, over 14 furlongs. Um, and and she, she can handle the ground, I'd say. You know, like I'd say maybe decent ground would be her preference, but she has that form with warm heart on soft to heavy at Leopards down at the start of the season. So I think she's quite a solid play. Um, seven to one, I believe, is her price. So, so yeah, I'm with, I'm with Shamida here. Um, we're, we're all circulating around that warm heart form. Harry's gone with Sea Silk Row for the British. And I'm going with Dermot Weld's Shamida for the Irish. So we'll see how that goes for us. We'll move on uh, to the Cadran, the Group 1 Cadran stakes. Um, a, a disappointing uh, turnout for the Cadran, just the six. Uh, True Shan topping the market, 11 to 10. Emily, Emily Dickinson, 9 to 4. Run for Oscar, 7s. Calling the wind, 14s. Moonwolf, 20s. And Vert Liberté in there at 20s. Uh, I don't really have too much opinion on this race. Doesn't uh, doesn't warrant my opinion. I think it's probably just true Shan goes and wins, but I'm not going to be telling that for the first time. I won't be the last time because Harry also agrees with me on that. Seems like the wind up's done the world of good for this horse, Ash. Um, last time out, I was after I put the horse up. I I'd seriously, I had a weird feeling when I woke up um, at, on the morning that he won at Doncaster. I just thought, you know what? I just feel like he's back. Everything back was in, uh, back in horses on feelings that you, uh, you, I, I wake, you wake yeah, up in the morning. Yeah. You're like, ah, oh, yes, Tony Cow's gonna have a travel. Uh. <laughs> That's how sad I am. I dream about horses, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but obviously, Coltrane disappointed. Um, I believe that Oshie Murphy got off the horse and said that something was amiss with that. You can write off Coltrane, he was beaten fair and square from a, a pretty long way out. Um, in the Doncaster Cup. The Grand Vizier was in fourth. Sweet Williams, a horse on the up, second in the E-ball. And, not in the E-ball. Yeah, it was in the E-ball, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're on uh, the money uh, there. Don't doubt yeah, yourself. You're on the money. You're <laughs> on the money. <laughs> um, and obviously, Broomer is no, he's no mug at all. He's only a seven-year-old. And they're both seven-year-olds, true, Sean. But with no Kiprios, obviously, Kiprios has entered um, for a race elsewhere on uh, at the weekend. True Shan should absolutely smash these into next week. And I mean, if if calling the wind wins this race, <laughs> then the game has well and truly gone. Like calling yeah. the wind it, just, it is not feasibly possible that that horse can run to anywhere near True Shan's level. Run for Oscar is now Charles Burns will need to do some serious magic to get that horse to win the Cadran. I can't see that horse at all winning it. Um, and the French horses, uh, well, there's a German horse in there as well, but mm. uh, true shall not piss it. Yeah, like I suppose, yeah. And I, I say, like, calling the wind. If calling the wind won a, won a group one, 
that would be the ultimate middle finger to me to not. I'd never back ever back a horse race ever again in my entire I, life. I, I, It'd be, just... It's worse than Cardem. That's how bad it is. <laughs> Cardem winning at Royal Ascot at a hundred to one, and you actually gave it a chance. This well, this yeah. would be worse because I know you like calling the wind. <laughs> yeah, I, it was. I like calling the wind, and I woke up on the. Well, I, I decided. You know what, Northumberland Plate, ah, this not the day for him. Not the day for him. Then he's gone on one. Uh, awful scenes. Yeah, look, you know. I, I'd have it down to, to, to run for Oscar being the danger, um, but Trushan's probably the one. That's what I'm calling the wind it. is 14 to 1. It's 12 to 1 in places. It's the worst price I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, they've got a price here, though. They've got a, they, 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 the bookies have got a price. They can't have <laughs> <laughs> there, like. there is no way you could have a calling the wind at 14 to 1 for a group one. It is scandalous. <laughs> It's not it's not amazing, but look, I, I love the horse, but I don't think he'll be winning this weekend. Um we'll move on. Uh we'll move on to actually Arc Day itself. Uh, and we're gonna keep you invested. We're gonna keep the arc until the end. So we're gonna do the group one races around it, starting with the Pre de l'Opera. Um interesting, interesting race this Haroldinho. Uh Via Sestina, three to one, Blue Rose Sen, seven to two, Jana Rose, eight, Lumineer Rock, eight. Uh, Nashua eights, Al Husson tens. Uh, Harry, uh, you like one at a fairly, fairly decent price here. Nashua for me, Ash. Um, I, it's, you can get eight to one around the gaff, uh, seven to two in places. Blue Rose Sen is a horse that I, do you know what I thought? Just listen to Sam Hart now. <laughs> that is usually a danger in itself. Um, but no, he's, he's he loved this horse, and mm. I think. She should have won at Goodwood, but then she was beaten fair and square um, by Warm Heart and the likes of Cecil Crowe last time out. I just think that they're a lot, that they're on hope now more than anything, not what she's showing. I think it's more than what she, she was showing. Via Sestina, again, disappointed. Um, she, I, I think since her domination job uh, at Newmarket, and obviously at the Curra, she was... She was given no chance at all but that's a different mm. story um nashua for me i just think she's back against the girls she's been it's a tough ask for a filly to give her weight allowance that she was getting for the weight for age last year against the boys it was easy for her to well it wasn't easy but it was easier for her to, to yeah. pick up these races but then obviously off levels is it's a much different ta- a tougher task but then getting as close to Mustard Aff and, and uh, horses like of that caliber. Um, I think she's she's the class act, and I think I don't know whether she'd be going. I've not heard anything to say that she wouldn't be going. I don't. Find, yeah, I've not heard anything to say she won't be. That's, yeah. I think that's the key there. I mean, like eight to one's a big price about. Her. I was going to say there's no way she'd be eight to one if she rocked up on the day. No, yeah. uh, there's not a cat in hell's chance. Um, but yeah, you, you look at it. You go down the field. Al Husson's uh, obviously beat Nashua. Um, so if you're going off those literal form lines, how? Oh, well, do you know what? I won't ruin the party, Ash. Yeah, look, I think that's what's got a good chance here, but I'm going to take a chance on one. Um, and look, I, I, I've actually Harry doesn't know what I'm going to put up, so I've actually swapped my, uh, swapped my. Are you lying? I've actually, I've actually. <laughs> I've teed I, you up. That was perfect journalistic skills. I've teed the question up for yeah. you, and you threw it back in my face. But I know it's poor from me. I, I look, I, I um. Uh, basically with this race because it's on arc day uh, i want to have a look at what the ground's going to be like on on the first day so it's probably not going to be the most anti-posty race i'm going to have in my life i probably won't have uh, a play on it anti-post wise um because i have two options for the race if it's soft ground or it's looking like it's riding soft and therefore sticky ground i'll be with al Husson. um i thought he's unlucky not to win the race um at goodwood uh, no, he did win the race at Goodwood. I thought the couple in behind were unlucky, but I thought she was not quite decent at, at Glorious Goodwood when winning uh, the Nassau Stakes. Um, disappointing last time out, but I was on decent decent ground. I think she wants that cut in the ground. So I'll be Val Houston at 10 to 1 if it's running that sort of softer side of things. But if the sun gets into the ground, as we're all hoping the weather forecast is correct, uh, and it could be decent ground for, for, for Arc Weekend, I'm going to be with Lumineer Rock at 8 to 1. Um, I thought she was really good last time out, winning the Group 2 over at the Curra, beating Jackie O by three lengths, uh, the Blanford Stakes. Uh, I thought she was really, really good. Uh, and you love to look through the form. Like She was even second to Warmheart at Ascot, who I thought Warmheart was devilishly good that day. And she was holding off a of Blue Stocking in behind, behind voice Ooh, number one of the that's day. That's the first one. Um, I thought she ran a really good race uh, in, in, in the Ribbles Dale at Ascot. 
Um, and I think decent ground is is key to her. You know, she's second on good to firm. She's one on good to yielding. Um, so I think she would want it on that sort of top end of the ground and wouldn't want it soft. Um, and I think she's a really, really progressive type. Really nice type for Joseph O'Brien. Um, and hopefully she can she can put a good display for herself in a group on company on the weekend. Um, but like I said, I'd like to see what the ground is like uh, on the on the first day, rolling into the second day to see how it will go. Because if it is, Lemonier Rocket eight to one. I'll take on Nashua eight uh, eight to one about the pair, and we're on to two different selections. Harry, we're going to roll into the Group One Prix de la Forêt. Uh, we're again, saving the arc till the end. So we're we'll rolling into what is an interesting race and topped by Kinross at six to four, topping the market. Frankie Dottori looked like he's going to try and go for another Group One. It's what everyone on Twitter wants to see, obviously. Uh, in behind, you've got Tribalist at eights, Angel Blur tens, Isaac Shelby tens, King Gold twelves. Harry, Kinross won this race last year. Is he going to do it again? Well, he was fourth in it the year before. He pissed up last year. I can't see anything beating him this year. Um, he's got the beating of the likes of Isaac Shelby. Now, I love Isaac Shelby as a horse. And I've always said that there's a big pot in, in him. He's, he's only a three-year-old. Um, but he's just... Compa Unlike Nashua, the weight for age seems to kind of... He seems to be struggling to get his head in front. And obviously, they were, they were so close together at uh, Glorious Goodwood. You couldn't get couldn't get past that all and I just can't see any reason how that form doesn't change unless Kim Ross miraculously doesn't well doesn't perform anywhere near his best and Isaac Shelby would have a chance those two are, are the ones that I'd be taking um I'll have a little go on the forecast because I'm a, I'm a mug like that um <laughs> but Kim Ross for me is just Frankie's good he, he won't be messing around will he at the weekend uh it'd be a good it'd be, it'd be good to see him bow out and I mean, he 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 was say, he mentioned post race that he was so confident that he'd win at, on um, at, at York and obviously mm. Goodwood. He said it was one of his best chances. So he he must ha ha hold this horse in seriously high regard. And looking at the others in behind, I think he should. He'd be very disappointed if this horse doesn't win. Yeah, look, you know, you have to you have to respect his chances. But anyone who's been following my uh, my selections throughout the summer uh, has seen that I've been trying to take on um, Kin Ross at every which direction that he's been going. I've been trying to take him on at every destination, and that's not changing this weekend because I'm with Homeless Songs at fourteen to one. Harry said there's nothing in behind that he can see that beats Kin Ross. I think Homeless Songs could be the one uh, if she turns up. We'd only have to roll it back what fourteen months. Back to her, like seriously, seriously good Irish, uh, Irish Fowls and Guineas victory, beating Tuesday by by five lengths. And even this season, she's run, she's run just the once and received a pound from Buckaroo um, and ran a really good race to finish second that day, right at the start of the season in May. Uh, Buckaroo's looking like a horse is heading off to Australia for for connections to to see how he can go there. I think he's a fairly good yardstick and and homeless songs, you know, acts on most grounds could be good ground, could be heavy ground. There's one on both of them. Um, and I think she, on a day, I think Homeless Songs is, is quite an incredible horse. Um, and she'll be in receipt of some weight from, from the older geldings. Um, and yeah, look, I, I'd give her a chance now. 14 to 1, I'd give her a good chance, Harry. I think she's got a fantastic chance. So Homeless Songs hopefully goes to the race. Don't know if Homeless Songs does go to the race, but got the entry in there. So I assume there's no reason why not to. Uh, and if the ground turns up uh, in any way, sort of in that middle part between... You know, good to soft and good grounds. I think Homeless Song should have a, a fantastic uh, chance for Dermot Weld. Roll into the final group race before the arc carry, the Prix de Labbe. Interesting, interesting sprint contest here. Two-year-olds could be meeting three-year-olds, four-year-olds, five-year-olds. Highfield Princess, the one top in the market, seven to two. Uh, Coeur de Pierre, eight to one. Azure Blue, tens. Brad Stout, same price. Go Atletico, ten to one as well. Uh, is there anything beating Highfield Princess here, Harry? Uh, or are you, are you are you going away from her? Or are you sticking at the top of the market? It'd probably be the draw that beats her. Um, I, I mean, you talk about draws being bad at Chester. I mean, this is just worse than Chester. It's just foul. I mean, it's good to watch. Um, mm. uh, is it good it was... to watch, though? The camera angle on the Abbey yeah. is awful. It's genuinely <laughs> yeah, it's don't it's know different. what's happening. It's different. <laughs> it's different. You have to wait until the final 50 yards to think if your horse is in front or... And then you or, don't know until they're 50 yards past the line who's actually won. Yeah, well, you it's must incredible. feel for the you must feel for the punters that miles away from the actual <laughs> from the actual things. They've, yeah. they've got no chance, have they? Um, 
Highfield Princess class act. Um, she was very she was disappointing at the Curra, but many of them were. Uh, Brad Sell included Art Power as well. I mean, that was just a horrific race, um, especially when I fancy the brains out of Highfield Princess. I mean, on on paper, she should have mullered them. Um, I'd be staying clear of this actually if I'm, if, if I'm with my punting head. I, I'd love Highfield Princess to go out and win. Um, I don't know whether this will be last season. In a in a horse loving way, I'd love her to bow out on a win, um, mm. especially at the top level. She's been nothing but a a, a fantastic servant for John Quinn and yeah. connections. And do you know what? She is such a good story, and it's put them on. It's put them in the limelight for so many so many seasons yeah. now. Isn't it? She's just been so good. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. Not something I'd be diving into, and you have to wait for the draw. Yeah. I agree with that. Not diving into, not we're going to be we're going to be waiting till the draw. If I was to land on one right now, it would probably uh, for a for a horse who's going to go to the race. I say get ahead. Probably has a decent chance uh, for Clive Cox. I was actually speaking to Matty Sutcliffe on Twitter. Uh, we've been long fans of Get Ahead all season. Um, ever since she won at Haydock, that listed race in May. The uh, the the uh, the uh, Name skates me. This is a race at Haydock in May. I was at Bath on the day that she won. Thought she was really good. And Clive Cox, the trainer, was saying, you know, she's a, she's a group horse in the making. And I, you had to wait a while to see that come to fruition. She was second on her next start in a group two in, in France, actually. So that sort of started to potentially show that she can be that group level horse. And then she was disappointing twice. And then last time out, she was backed in from six sixes, the 22s, uh, finished second at the Curra in the Flying Five. Um, she was unlucky not to win. I thought uh, Moss Tucker won that day. I say if she turns up here, she's got a good chance. Um, can handle most grounds. You know, that bit of digging the ground wouldn't be too bad for her. Uh, guess ahead, 14 to 1. If I was to land on one right now, that's where I would be. Harry will go on to the big one. Uh, the Pre de l'Arc de Triomphe. Uh, big race of the weekend. We've got plenty of angles into it. We'll have plenty of chat about the runners as well. Ace Impact is the big talking horse of the race. 3 to 1, topping the market. Hook'em. In there at nines two, continuous, probably going to get supplemented by No Brian sixes. Westover is there at sevens. Feed the flame eights. Fantastic moon, another who could be turning up to the race. Twelves. Baybridge fourteens. Uh, a race steeped in quality, steeped in class. Uh, which horse has got the Harry Beard seal of approval? One horse that I haven't backed all year, but it, this year is a different story. Who come for me <laughs> is the nap of the weekend. I think this right, horse right. is. I, I I've been taken by this horse. I mean, the King George. Um, this is the end of July, my birthday. It'd be rude not to class it as the best race of the year. And do you know what? It was a fantastic. <laughs> just, 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 just your birthday. Yeah. Just your do birthday. you know what? It's got that added bit. Of, it's got that added sentiment to it, hasn't <laughs> it? Um, it? But it was. I mean, beating Westover. Many people have wrote Westover off. I mean, after his, he, he was flying home in the derby. He couldn't quite reel in the leader, but then since then, has he been disappointing? Well, do you know what? He's 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 won plenty of money since, and he's been a fantastic servant. Hookham though was so game um, for Owen Burrows, and obviously um, the, the connections. It was just, I I think that form alone is the bet is the standout form on offer. We've got a bull of a horse in Ace Impact who just looks, who's just, he's on everyone's mouth. He's just. <laughs> How good is he? I mean, do you know what? Watching the video of him, he, he was, um, I can't think of who he was doing a piece of work with, but I'm not being yeah, funny. I was more, I, I was more impressed with the horse. The, I was more impressed with the other horse. <laughs> the other horse was pulling double. <laughs> I think someone tweeted it like, oh, I'll be back in that one next time out. And I think someone tweeted what horse it was. Yeah, it's incredible. You send that to TC. He'll find that a race at Brighton <laughs> or something. He, he, you'll get that winning a few races. But no, um, who can for me, Ash, is arguably has the best form on offer and do you know what the connection the, the connection has just been wiping up every group one you know the likes of al Husson, um most uh, just so many decent horses this year um especially this sort of trip and my granddad um he's he, he's an absolute legend and he doesn't watch that much racing but he always says and um, do you know what it will stick with me to the day i die he goes he goes Anything over a mile back, Jim Crowley. And I was just like, oh, really? So he said, I, I went round his ass the other day and he goes, 
have you seen the art grand then he goes because he just does the itv7 yeah, and yeah, you yeah. know you whatnot and he goes oh, yeah. so i've read him the things i was like ace impact bull of a french horse um he tops the market who comes in second he went who can sure sure, sure back that horse he <laughs> and he goes i goes yeah yeah he goes who's riding it's like jim crowd he said put some money on that one for me. so i said <laughs> you know what it'd, it'd be rude not to so who come for me ash is the one for me in the arc so this is this is uh, the the beard horse of the weekend then is it? Yeah. <laughs> It'd be a few sore faces if Jim Crowley gets beat on this one, but uh, it's a fan- fascinating renewal this one, yeah. and um, it might actually not be around on, on a bog, unlike yeah. last year. So. Uh, yeah, last year was awful. Um, yeah, no, Hookham is is my second choice. Um, I really like him. I, I thought he was very good last time out. I agree with you. Probably the best form on offer is uh, that King George. And the, the two of them, Hookham and Westover, are very good. King of Steel back in third. Um, you know, and, and you have to put it in perspective, you know, he's beaten a derby winner and an Irish derby winner just this season from being out on track twice. You know, he's done all he can really do. Uh, even beating Luxembourg last time out, who's gone on to frank the form uh, just recently in the Irish Champion Stakes. Even another seconds. ride where I thought, oh. Ah, no, I think I think being beaten fair and square, I think. And I was, I backed Luxembourg. I think, I think on another day, man, maybe he could have done better, but I thought, I thought it was fair and square, to be honest. But yeah, Hooker's yeah, full respect for him. I will be backing him for sure. He has to go on side. But the one I want to be with the most is Sim Camille. Uh, big shout out to Icy, actually. He put a poll saying over under 2.5, how many horses do you not know of in the field? Uh, and one of them, one of his horses he didn't know was Sim Camille. I've, I've been on the, I, this horse has been on the, my agenda for a while. Actually for the King George, I believe. I think it was enter for the King George and Connections decide to swerve Ascot. Um, because of ground reasons uh, and a bit scratching my head at the time because they, they it was a bit of, you know, best form was on soft ground for Sim Camille and they were saying that he wants better ground and I could not get my head around it but he showed it to good effect last time out. Uh, he's a really good winner of a Group 1 uh, last time out um, on decent ground. That was over in uh, Germany, the, uh, the the Grosser Prix von Berlin, of course, um, beating uh, some decent horses in behind. The German derby winner was back in fourth. Um, he, he only won by half a length, uh, three quarters of length that day, uh, but he pretty much did it, you know, hands and heels job. You know, it was a couple couple reminders and he was gone away. He won as you'd like. And even before that, on, on, on good ground as well, um, he just just went to the front, um, went to the front under Alexis Pouchon and just went away, one by three lengths in, that, in a group two back over in Sean T. Um, this horse, I don't think we've seen the best of him yet. Um, he's run some fantastic RPRs of, of late uh, over the last couple of seasons. Uh, I really think that he can put in a good showing in the arc this weekend. 14 to 1 about Sim Camille uh, is a very good price, I think. Uh, and look, I'm going to be with I'm gonna be with him. Uh, I've been, I've, I've, uh, my fingers have been stung back in Antipos before, uh, but I'm going to be happily getting stuck into him here at 14 to 1. I think he's got a great mm-hmm. chance uh, in what looks like an open enough arc. So, uh, yeah, 14 to 1, 9 to 2, Hookham. We agree with each other. Hookham and Hookham for both of us, for Sim Camille as well for me. Harry, any other bets? or naps uh I'll, I'll just go remind the ladies and gentlemen what your nap is of the weekend yeah he'll come for me and he'll come for my granddad as well so there's two votes from our household two votes for hookham my nap will be uh van deek in the middle park i think he's a fantastic horse. A good double that is it's a good double yeah do you know what i'd even probably chuck up the relief rally van deek double i i think i think I'd, i i think I'd be a, I'd be a sad man if either of them get beat. I think I don't seem. Uh, I, I think Relief Rally's got a very good chance, but Van Dijk just edged it for me in, in nap terms. So we'll go for that one. Uh, and that's all we've got time for on the the Arc preview. Only for the horses Arc preview. If you did enjoy, please smash the like button. Go and hit it. As we say every week, Harry, it doesn't it doesn't affect their lives, but it's just that little button, isn't it, there, Harry? Just, just, there and just, just, just right there. Just, just, and just also, there we have a little bit of news as well. Um, so, thanks to Lee. He's not on it, but he, he takes the credit in this one. He came up with a fascinating idea. Um, mm. So, mo- every Sunday from the middle of October, we will be running a anti-post national hunt preview, 8 till 9 on Twitter, just like our Saturday morning lives that we do every Saturday morning at half past 10. This one's 8 till 9. Um, and yeah, we've we've had quite a bit of reaction to it. Um, we've had plenty of good messages, and it, we're really looking forward to getting going. So if you haven't already, make sure you do follow all of the socials. Only Falls of Horses Racing or OFLH Racing on Twitter, 
follow our accounts, Harrybeard7, Asimus Juno, and also Racing Lee One. We can't miss out the the great Geordie. Um, <laughs> he, he, he's not here, but he's in he's here in spirit and uh, he will be back on very soon. So if you are missing him, we miss him. Um, send him your love. Send him yes. your love. 8 p.m. till 9 p.m. 15th of October, the day uh, after uh, Chepstow. No, the day of Chepstow finishing is when we'll be doing it. 8 p.m. What a perfect day to start. What a perfect I know. day. We'll be celebrating the Persian War winner uh, that day. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to that. So make sure to go check that out. If you did enjoy this video, please do like and subscribe to the channel. As Harry said, do follow us on the socials. And we'll be back Saturday morning, uh, bright and early, 10.30 a.m., uh, to talk about the Arc Weekend in full detail, full declarations, full prices, full ground knowledge will be in our brains. And we'll be happily digesting that and showing that all to you. 10.30am on Twitter. Make sure to be there. If you're having a bet, please do gamble responsibly. But we'll see you very, very soon.